Hello everybody, so today we're going to do a uh, Fusion 360 and Crawlbot CNC tutorial. Uh, so as you can see, we've got Fusion 360 opened up. Uh, it is on the education license, so if you are a student or a teacher, you can get Autodesk to let you have it for free. Um, so that's what we're going to be using. Um, and before we get started, we want to test out, uh, just to check on a few of the settings before we get started. Um, it is uh, important that you have the right settings set up in your document um, because that will affect your ability to uh, send it to the CNC router. Uh, this is the Mac version. There are some small variations in the PC version, so I will try to note those as we go along. Um, but if we come on over to uh, our name here in the upper right hand corner and click on preferences, uh, like I said, there's just a few settings that we are going to want to check out. The first thing that you're going to want to look at is your default modeling orientation. Uh, it does need to be Z up. Um, I believe by default, uh, Fusion 360 sets this to Y up. So if you're using this for the first time, you do need to change that um, and make sure that it says Z up. Uh, the other thing that we want to look at is over here in default units uh, for design. Uh, we're going to design in inches because we need to cam uh, in inches. Uh, cam is going to be the processes that we step through to actually make our CNC router uh, cut out our designs. Uh, and so we want that, that, that by default has to be in inches. And so we want our design uh, units to, to match that. Uh, once you have that, go ahead and click OK. Um, I like to open up just a new window to make sure that those settings uh, do in fact take place. Uh, so today what we're going to do is we are going to work on creating a, uh, a CNC camp stool. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of show some, some basic functions uh, to help make that happen. The first thing that we're going to do is um, notice that we're in this model workspace. Uh, this is where we're going to do the bulk of our design. And we're going to start off by creating a new sketch. Uh, and we want to select the plane in which we want to do that. And we're going to, we're going to build along the XY plane. So we're going to select this bottom one here. Uh, and that's going to take us into a sketch viewer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by creating a bounding box. Now, for this uh, design exercise, everything has to be within 12 inches by 12 inches. Um, and so I'm going to kind of come in here and, oops, we'll undo that real quickly. Um, and we're going to create a, uh, a 12 inch by 12 inch rectangle. And that way we can make sure um, that everything is kind of appropriately sized. So I'm going to type 12 in here, and I'm going to tab over and click 12 in here and click Enter. Um, and you'll notice that kind of extends beyond the range of what we can see. Uh, we can scroll to zoom in and out, or uh, we can click this little Home button, and that's going to kind of take us to a, a zoomed out view where everything fits in. Um, I'm going to kind of click on top and go back to a top view. Um, and you can see here we're, we're in that 12 by 12. And to get started with this, um, we are going to be doing some, you know, there, there's, there's lots of different ways to get the shape that you want for your, uh, your stool. Um, I'm going to be kind of showing you uh, one way, but there are lots of different ways to do this. This is going to be kind of maybe the most simple. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this bounding box of 12 inches by 12 inches, and I'm going to uh, come into Sketch, uh, and I'm going to create a spline. Uh, now for this, I'm going to try a fit point spline. Um, this is going to allow me to create some curves uh, that will make kind of maybe a more organic shaped chair. Um, but there, as you can see, there's lots of different shapes that you can play with. Um, the important part is, is that your chair is something that's going to work. Uh, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to just start by clicking on a, a button here and I'm gonna pick another point and I'm gonna you can notice how as you kind of drag around those two points how it's gonna create uh, some curvature and that's that's good now you may notice that down here it's kind of you know extending beyond that 12 inches by 12 inches and we'll have to address that later on um, but as we kind of come around and we start clicking on additional points you will notice how our stool begins to take shape. So we'll come up around here, 
I don't know, maybe create a little back and we'll come around here to the end, okay? Um, so this is, we want to kind of complete the whole circuit, um, but as we saw, we, we've actually extended outside the, uh, the 12 inch by 12 inch space here just a little bit. Um, so we can um, fix that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit escape uh, and that just brings me back to having a regular cursor. And what we can do is we can actually begin to, to, to come and tweak these curves just a little bit. And so if we want to bring them in um, a hair or we wanna change the curvature just a bit, maybe I wanna move this back a bit, you know, or this one, you know, maybe let it give it a little bit more of a rise. Okay. And we just want to kind of tweak the shape of our chair. Now, you'll notice I'm still over here um, past this 12 inch line just a bit, um, but I'm well in on this side. And so overall, we could say that the, uh, the shape of this chair is, is well within 12 inches by 12 inches. So this will be okay for today. Um, now, this is kind of a good overall shape. We do want to kind of carve out um, a shape um, on the inside. Um, again, it could be just about anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do another spline and see if I can find kind of something that is going to be, again, kind of like interesting or creative. Um, you do want to make sure that it's going to be structurally sound. The, uh, the chairs do need to hold up to uh, 200 pounds. So we wanna make sure that we don't make these walls too thin because what we're gonna do is we're essentially gonna be kind of extracting uh, this, this whole piece out. Um, so we'll say that this looks pretty interesting, pretty cool. Uh, we also need to keep in mind that we're gonna be kind of putting all of these things together uh, with threaded rod. And so we do need to account for that threaded rod. So I'm gonna come up to sketch and I'm gonna click on the uh, center dimension circle, if it will let me, hold on just a second. That's being a little frustrating. So let's try that again. We're gonna come in here and center dimension circle. And I'm gonna pick just some, some places where I'm gonna thread my rod. Um, so we'll come over here. And we need to keep in mind the threaded rod that we're gonna be using is half inch. Um, so we might be tempted to kind of put in 0.5 um, for the diameter of this circle um, because we're gonna use half inch rod. Uh, the difficulty with that is if you do that, you're going to find that it is going to be very difficult to get that half inch rod through a half inch hole because there's no wiggle room for it. And so what we're actually going to do is we're going to increase that size to 0.6 inches. Um, and that should allow us to uh, have enough kind of wiggle room to really get that uh, threaded rod through our design. So I'm going to pick a couple of different points to do that. Okay, and you can actually kind of quick quick uh, add a circle by just hitting C for the center diameter circle. Okay, and let's do one final one up here. Notice this is, it's gonna get a little thin in here, um, but we still should be, okay, we've got a good bit of material here. Okay, so this is kind of the, the, the face profile of one of our, uh, uh, slices that we're gonna we're gonna have for our uh, our chair. Now, given the the requirements for the project, uh, we are going to need to have some uh, inserts that go in between each kind of slice of our chair. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we are going to create those inserts here uh, in the center. So this is the center part is gonna eventually get cut out and thrown away. Um, but what we can do is we can actually use this to create uh, inserts so we can kind of make the best use of that material. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a one inch circle. Okay, and I'm going to come into the center of that circle and I'm going to create a 0.6 inch hole. Uh, and what that's going to allow us to do is to essentially have these little circular inserts uh, that we can use uh, for our design. Now you are welcome to do your inserts however you want or if you have another clever way of kind of you know filling out the uh, the overall dimensions and size then then go for it. This is just 
uh, the way that I've done it. You know, certainly you're welcome to experiment out on this as much as you want. So let's go. Um, and since I have four holes here, I'm going to need four inserts. So I'm going to make those here. Okay. So there we go. So this kind of represents kind of a single facade um, of, uh, of our design. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I don't really need these bounding boxes anymore. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and delete those lines. We don't need them anymore. Okay. And so here you can see that we're going to uh, kind of look through here. We're going to be extruding some faces out. Uh, and we're going to... Uh, we're going to try to pull these out, um, the thickness of the wood that we're going to be working in, uh, and hopefully we'll kind of get a sense for uh, where we're going on this. So I'm going to kind of pull back to this, this home view. Uh, I'm going to hit E for extrude. Um, so you can also find that in the create menu here. Uh, and so we're going to select this face for extrusion, and we're also going to select these four inserts for extrusion as well. Okay, so once you have all those selected, uh, we are going to extrude the thickness of our material. In this case, we are using half inch MDF. Uh, so we want to extrude it half an inch. And once you see that pop up, go ahead and hit enter. Uh, and here you can see that we have what will be the first layer uh, of our stool. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and save this up. So we'll call this stool sample. And uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to pause right here and we'll talk about how to go on and assemble this into a full stool uh, and do some photorealistic rendering. Uh, and then in part three, we'll walk through how to do the, uh, uh, the cam model for getting it ready to send over to the crawlbot.